This is Gabriella Minetta, intern from the College of New Jersey, assisting with the oral history program with the Battleship New Jersey in Camden, New Jersey. Today is Sunday, November 11th, 2018. We are on board the Battleship New Jersey, and our interview guest is Mr. Anthony Muzzy from Hingham, Massachusetts. Mr. Muzzy was a gunner's mate on the USS New Jersey during World War II. Welcome aboard the USS New Jersey, Mr. Muzzy. What is your current age? 311, 28. Is my is my uh, my birthday my age? I'm 90 now. When did you enlist? Oh God, quite quite a quite a way back, in the, in the 40s, and I stayed in for for a while until I got discharged. Then I come back in c c civilian life, and I started joining these different uh, uh, clubs, you know, veterans. Uh, organizations. I belonged to both of them, Cohasset and Hingham. And I sat reading and things that I knew about this ship, you know, because it had a little participation in it. And when I was on it, I was in the Pacific area with on the Pacific Ocean on the opposite side. And do I tell you how it all started? Well, it started like this. Our, our ship had the only plane on it. We had it, you know, to a spot plane. <clears throat> We take uh, every once in a in one a few days or whatever. Our co commander would send a spot plane out to see what's going around or what's up ahead or what we. This is in the Japanese area in the South Pacific, and so we'll let it be. We're up this morning. They happen to go up this morning, send it up, and they got a radio back right away that they uh, they they seen down there a big amount of Japanese ships going our way. And it's funny, we had a, a, a great amount, amount of ships going the opposite way. So there, we spotted them with about 20, 25 ships going that way, and then we were going this way. So that started what they called the turkey shoot, because we, we were fighting in planes and bombs and everything for a, a good week, day and night, and that Japanese and all of us. That's that's. That's the era I was in till till it, till it ended, you know. When I get out, get out of the service, and went went to a few monthly meetings and things like that, and then just continued on my my regular life. Before we move on, can you remove your cover, please? Your I mean, hat. Yeah. Your hat. Can you remove your hat, please? What's my hat? Yeah, just remove it. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> How old were you when you joined the Navy? When I was in the service, I was 45. I was 70, was it? 17, or what the hell was it? 17? See, that's what I can't remember. 17, I guess it was, yeah. 17. I remember we quit high school, uh, a bunch of us, so <laughs> that's what it was. Half of us made it, and the other half didn't. So, that what was, was your inspiration for joining in high school? Well, I don't know. I I I always got along. I I thought it was, I, I don't know. I never made it as to be a, a life a lifehood or something like that there, but you know I was very comfortable for what we were doing because I was young, you know, and, and eager to do anything we could. You know what I mean? So that's what I did. And I get on with life the same way. I I went to uh, meetings that we had once a month, you know, for a couple of years because we used to get paid for that. The same as if we were in the Navy, we still, we still got paid for it. And after that, I started uh, my, my home, uh, a home business, construction business, and that was the start of my my career, you know. Uh, but on that on that uh, weekly that uh, turkey show, God, that was uh, day and night, you know. That was that was one of the most talked about. Uh, 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 areas of, of bomb bombings and Japanese shooting and us, us we shooting at them and sinking ships and all that stuff. It was terrible. It was just terrible. But it was something that had to be done. We all did our part, and that was it. Then that's when we all broke up. One guy went this way, another guy went that way. We, we didn't. And when we get out of the service, we tried to find each other, see where the heck you were. Some of them were unknown, and some still were around. And we're nice to see them, and that's when I joined some of the uh, different clubs, you know, and things like that. What different organizations did you join? What was my intentions to join? What were the organizations that you joined that you're talking about? I, I still didn't get you. What were the organizations that you joined that you're talking about? What were the clubs that you joined? I, I'm sorry, but 
I'm, I'm just terrible. My kid no knows worries. it. I'm, I'm, no I'm, worries. I'm, what were the organizations and clubs that you joined? Oh, well, uh, Cohasset uh, was one of them, Cohasset Yard Club, and the other one was uh, 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 20 Beale Street. I can't remember the Naval Air, Air Ministry Depot, that, that, that club that they had there, those two clubs. And then I also was a musician, too, you know, after a while. And I, I got a band together when, when I was over in Guam. I was there. And uh, Jesus, uh, that's when I got relieved of a lot of duty. I said, just, holy boy. That's when I didn't, wasn't too good with the guys in the barracks, you know. I used to go with my whites on overseas, all dressed up, and there's ten of us in the band. The bus would pick us up and take us up to the old man, you know, the, 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 the charge of the whole island there. That was his night, Saturday night. And we sat down, set up and everything, and then we went to the bar and they gave us two tickets, one ticket for each drink, and we played away and he was happy it didn't help. And we could do anything we wanted on the island because we had a band, oh geez, and, and on all the guys in my barracks, they were peed at me. Oh, because I'm going out, you know, with these in, I'm playing in the band, and they used to give me the finger and all that stuff. <laughs> and they, they were trying to make it tough on me, but then I said, that's okay. And so finally I said, I'll, I'll take care of these guys. So Jesus, the way it was, one of them went down to a ship and came in a freighter or something, and he bought this monkey off of there. And then and he, bought a, he bought him in the barracks. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, he nearly destroyed the place. We we had, we were on our hands and knees. One guy picked up his watch and it missed it. And that was just overnight. My God, I said to myself, we get rid of him. So and that's that was my life until I you know just I got discharged, and uh, used to go my, once a month to meetings, our meetings and things like that. And we had a nice thing. We paraded in the town, in Quincy, Hingham, and stuff like that. You know for. My, memorial services and other services, people had passed away. So we did that. And I was comfortable with what I did. I just had to become a citizen again. You know, after seeing being on a ship like this, I was so proud of it. And this in the Missouri, I've seen that quite a bit. I've been on it, but not patient, just visit. And that was a nice ship too, which that's over in Hawaii. And this one's over here, and I hope they, I hope they're doing good so far. What I see, I love it. So just just to know I was on it, you know, that was really something. It was a gift. And I didn't forget war or anything like that. It was just when I drove up here today and I saw it, I said, "Wow!" And many years have gone by. I can't believe it. I was on there. I started talking to myself, you know, how beautiful all the things that we did in every holy Christmas, because there was. There's supposed to have been, as far as I can remember, 2,000 Marines on our ship. They were in charge of firing, you know, and, uh, the, uh, the, the, the guns and things like that. And uh, I used to listen to them. Nobody could be on the deck when they did this. Everybody below deck except them. Every once in a while you get a spot, a uh, thing had come up on the radar. It was those mines, those big round mines with the pins in them. As if you hit them, they blow the ship apart. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus, they were out there half an hour, three quarters an hour before they finally hit one of those, and it blew it, and some of the scrap will come on the deck, and people were told right away, don't go near because it's hot and stuff. They wanted it for souvenirs, you know. They burnt their fingers and things like that and all that. And they said, Jesus, shouldn't do that. So that's that's primarily what, what I used to do, you know. And I used to go to the meetings every once a month. I met the rest of the guys. I met some new guys that weren't there, but you know. So we did that. We uh, we on our way out, we were t told that the Japanese islands, uh, those little islands all around it, were taken by the Japanese. We were supposed to blow them apart on our way out to meet the other ships out in the South Pacific, and that's what we did. Saipan, Guam, Guam was the last mile, and we went back to it because there were salvages it again. And all ships traveling that way had to stop there for refueling, ammunition, and all stuff like that before they went out. Where did you go to boot camp? Uh, camp Perry Williamsburg, Virginia. It's a wonder I remember it. <laughs>
Do you have any stories from boot camp that you want to share? Oh, boot camp was we raised here too, but very stern. They are very stern, you know. They taught you, you listen here, they taught you how to shoot. First they try you out to see what you can do. And then, you know, you're not like the Marines, you know, fussy. they were our boss now, even though we were in the Navy. They told us what to do. We had to go rifle practice with, with the, uh, what out of the M40s, sir, or 40s, or I think they were M40s. So we had to do that for a while. We had to make sure we could swim. We'd be up on a 60-foot tower, and we'd be all lined up there, holding on, walking up in a big line behind there. When the guy tapped you on the back like that, you jumped. You had a certain way you had to hold, hold yourself. You know, jump with your feet down. They wanted to know who could swim and who couldn't swim and who was a good swimmer and who wasn't. Because at that time, I remember one thing that happened. The Marines were were were, uh, were training some uh, their cadets that they got, and they got called on like on a two o'clock morning walk. They blew the whistle. The captain and they, everybody to get up fully dressed. Well, he dressed and everything, that's what they did, and they got outside and he sat marching them. Nothing to do five or six miles, you know, and he marched them and through a brook. When I started going through this brook, I guess about eight or ten of them got drowned. And, and that, that was a pretty bad mark for that camp down there, I tell you. So they lightened up on doing something like that there. And after that, I was at, I would much just say I was everywhere, here, there, and that's the way it was. And I come home, I joined the first thing I did, I waited to get in uh, one of the uh, clubs, so a couple of the guys that beat me from uh, from the war were there and they were looking for members and Jesus, I said, Mars, why don't you join our club? We got a nice club. He says, Grace, it's beautiful. He said, right, dance today, we have there, we have different things. So I said, yeah, I think I'll try it. So I tried it and they made me, uh, they made me a priest and, and what do you call it, in, in Navy there, uh, the Navy slang for a priest, I knew, but a reverend or something. So that's what I was, you know, people passed away, I, I blessed them and things like that, or they're sick, and that, that was my duty. Did you go to A school? Where? A school. Answered? I, d I don't know of that one. Um, I don't know if they had A school back then. So okay. Where did he, I just asked him where he learned to be a storekeeper and a gunner. Where did you learn to be a gunner? Where did I learn what you? To be a gunner's mate. Where did you learn that? Uh, uh, in boot camp. In boot yeah, camp. Yeah, they did. They gave us a little training on it. Not a hell of a lot, but a little. It was mainly just getting sitting down, strapping yourself up, make sure that the thing is right and all that. The only thing I had against it, I never said nothing to you, just amongst us guys, but I didn't tell any of the big wheels. It was slow. It, it was okay firing like this, but it was slow turning, you know. To, to, I, I, a little faster to the meat the Japanese planes that were coming in and stuff like that. You know, they weren't just coasting. And you, so I found that sometimes those things were too, a little too slow to get to the project I was trying to get, and I missed it, something like that. That's the only thing I think. Now, the only thing I can say, if they're still having things like that, that they make it hydraulic at least much faster. I mean, you know, make it so, gee, you can, you can, the way you want it to go fast and stuff like that. Not just, you know, uh, a run-down section. So that's what I did. The thing, the alarm goes off, I ran up there and I strapped myself in and waited for what happened. All, all those uh, ships when we all met. That was five, about five or six days, day and night. This, 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 uh, Turkey shoot was a day and night. Anybody who was in that area knows what you mean when you say turkey shoot. Do you have any stories about storekeeping? Uh, about what? Storekeeping. Do you have any stories? I still didn't get you, honey. Do you have any stories about storekeeping? No, yeah, I, I, I a few, but <laughs> not like, you know, here you are, I'm doing things like this and washing around and I, I got nice stuff there and it's so keep up. We have to keep it full so we stop wherever we have to to keep, you know, to keep a, to get our whatever we need. Like uh, our ship, the ship holds a hundred, this ship here holds 180,000 gallons of fuel. Do you know that? That's, that's what this ship holds, 180,000 gallons. Okay. 
So that's 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 one thing. Now, what the hell was the other thing I wanted? I get a little bit bolder. My mind isn't clear like it should be. Um. Oh, Jesus. What was that question again? Storekeeping stories. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I was going to say, uh, I, you know, playing in the band in the rain now, I had my, over where it was warm, and Guam like that, and you know, we we could wear, we usually wear dungarees when we're not a regular Navy. But now that we're playing in the band, the ten of us wear white, our whites, our white uniform, and then we have a blue uniform to dress one too. Mm -hmm. So every night they see me going out to, hey, Muzz, you know, hey, Muzz. Mm -hmm. And I said, son of a bitch, I'm not going to lay off these guys. They were, they were really getting to me. I said, oh, bastards. Oh, boy, one time this wise guy come down in there. Hey, I'll take a cat and a cigarette. Jesus, I'm sorry. I have to wait till we, uh, we get it back. I'm all out. Christ, I had probably ten cattons there. I said, that's okay. <laughs> Keep it up. Keep it up. I said, I'll, I'll go as much as you want to go. So that, that's what, sort of that's how I get back at them. And I'll tell you, it was goddamn quick because they were and wanted to smoke. They straightened out pretty good, but then they were mad because when I was playing in the band, the uh, uh, Captain J.G. What I forget what what he was. You know, we had the bars up here. He had when you when you when you're that rate, I understand they can have you bring your car where where you were, your own car. You know, like if you were in Guam, you could have them bring your car so that you could have your car to use. Well, he used to come and pick me up to play in the band, and they'd go, Marsh! Hey, Marsh! They'd be giving me the old thing. I said, you son of a bitch, I was going to myself. <laughs> uh, you know, there was just jealousy there, you know, and then, and then the guy, the guy sleeping on top of me, Jesus, I, I, I couldn't get a good night's sleep. He was, he twisted and turned, and his hand would bang on the, the, the deck and everything else, and I, I uh, it wake, would wake me up. We had double 50 in a, in a Quonset hut, uh, up and down, two at each bunk, you know. That's what we had there. And, uh, gee, and then we had uh, duty sometimes. Uh, we did at night, uh, at night time, we did go out scouting for Japanese that didn't know the war was still over. Would you believe that? Uh, they call it a pivouac like that. They'd have a few Marines, Army Air Corps Marines and the Navy. And we'd go to the jungle because the, they were dug in. And we shot a few. We caught a few of them that didn't know the, their hair was down the hair, you know, from, from, from being like that. How did, how, did the, how did they survive like that? Well, at the time, we didn't know a lot of people wore khaki like this. And that's what those, those natives, you didn't see them like in the movies with a rag here and, and, the, and the women thing like this, you know, to, like you see them with a buffalo and all that. They, they had dungarees. Now, the, the guys had whites. So, here we go in the big way. And I think one of the guys might have shot a, shot a Jap was up in the tree, this one here. Because they, they were dug down. And the only thing they knew how to say in, the, in America, most of them, hey, Joe, hey, Joe, <laughs> trying to con you in there to stab you in the back or something when you went by and things like that, you know? So, what the hell was the other thing? I'm trying to squeeze a lot of th things in there from memory. Well, there was uh, something else there I wanted to tell you. I don't know. I, I, to I already told my kids about about the movies. We, we, we got the first movies when, when they were made. We got the first copies and showing them to all of the people overseas, the Army, Navy, and all them, you know? So this night was raining like dogs and cats. And then John Wayne, a picture come out of him, and I loved him, you know. So I said, Jesus, I don't matter what it is, I got, I want to see that film. Because as soon as it was done, they went to another island. That's why whoever wanted to see it, there's a snow and you wanted to see it, you have to go out and sit out there and see it. So I got my poncho, I put it on, walked down there, I sat down and you know, elevated like in a ball field, and a big movie there. and. Uh, and, and I'm I'm watching uh, I'm I'm watching the film. I'm going, Jesus Christ! I gotta be crazy. I'm sitting there like this, and the punches over me, and the water's dripping over me, coming over, and the, and the guy's mind, you're out of your goddamn mind. What the hell is wrong with you? 
Oh, what's up? Why did your light just rain in? He was going. You know, I said, come on. Knock it off, will you, guy? And I took the goddamn thing off, and I was disgusted myself. <laughs> I said, Jesus. I said, I like John Wayne, but uh, I mean, I mentioned his name, but Christ, do I like him that much that I have to go and punish myself? Go, go sit up there like that? I know that they thought I was probably nuts. Were you on board for the commissioning ceremony in 1943? Was I on board what? For the commissioning ceremony. Uh, I didn't get to. Uh, for, for the commissioning ceremony, were you on board? No, 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 no. Do you remember when you found out that you were stationed to the New Jersey? I uh, say, so can you repeat that? Do you remember when you found out that you were stationed, you were assigned to the New Jersey? Yeah, I, I, I heard of it. I heard of it because there was there was four or five of them out there at the time, you know, shutting around here and there and all that play. But that was talked about one was the Missouri, which I guess they signed a treaty on it, didn't they, on the Missouri there, if I remember correctly. And then the other ones started coming to me. I started reading about battleships, and I was getting interested in, you know, and what, what they use them for, for bombardments, and, uh, and uh, a shell can go 20 miles. And I started reading up all, all, all about it. And here, here it happened to end up here, which is nice. It was so nice to see it. I'd rather see that than, if people don't realize it, on, on the Massachusetts, it was built in Quincy at the Florida shipyard, and they had one hell of a time to get it the hell out of there. They, they judged it by about a couple of feet, I guess, on the, the middle. Uh, if you look at this ship and the other ships like this, they narrow like this, and any of the belly of it goes out like this and comes back in again. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus, would you believe it? They, c they couldn't get it to go through there. All they had to do was measure for crying out before they did it. It was about a month before they, they, they had had to burn something and do something, get it out and fix the bridge, but they got a new bridge on account of it. And the other part they had a, with the tugs, they had to take it to Boston to uh, be, be fitted, to fit out with the guns and all that stuff. They did that in Boston. Can you tell me about your combat experiences? My home experiences? Your combat experiences? Your war experiences? It's your war experiences? I didn't get you. Can you tell me about your war experiences? War, I guess it's true. War. Your, your what you observed besides uh, Marianas, uh, some of the other battles you observed? Oh, uh, see, no, Chuma, what? Were you at Okinawa? I didn't serve in too many of them. Uh, I, I, I served on that one, what, what, what the hell did you call it? I can't mention the name of the island there. I served on that. We, all we did was bombarded them mostly, you know, uh, give them an airlift, you know what I'm saying? But of the all of them, as far as I know, we were the only one that really had this, the, 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 uh, the plane I was on, and, and that did help us an awful lot. Because can you imagine if we didn't have the, that plane what what would the Japanese been ahead of us, and they would have they would have started. We at least we had a chance to get ready. We knew we were going to meet, okay. And that started the turkey shoot. And Jesus, that was day and night for about a week, day and night. And we lost planes too. Our pilots really good, but we we went out on that one. We went out on that one. Then. Uh, and then there's the, the some one ship went someplace. I don't know where the hell it was. I, I can't figure. Out. I had to go to a, a lend a hand so, somewhere overseas, but it wasn't a South Pacific. Uh, maybe he might know where it was. I don't know. Uh, it was in what was the other ocean down there? It goes out on the other side near Florida, where it opens up into the uh, up Atlantic. Um, the Caribbean. Or the no. Gulf of Mexico. What was it? Gulf of Mexico or the Caribbean? Well, it was near there. It was it was, the it was in that in that area. It was in that area. Mm -hmm. That's what we did there. And that was after the war. That was after the war. Yeah. That you were there. Yeah. Um. Uh, could you describe what the 16-inch gun sounded like when oh, they were firing? Oh boy. Let me tell you something. That's another thing. 
Those guys learn fast. If you got caught without those in there, it was 500 bucks. And in the break, I don't know how many days, when, when those things went off, whoo, you could light up like a city at night time. You could, you could only see them going off. And you, and you start reading about it, and you say, I see one out there when I was walking in. The goddamn things go 20 miles, capable of going 20 miles. And it naturally had different heads, I guess, or, you know, uh, to, to screw on there, uh, you know, uh, depending on what the, how you, you were trying to destroy what it was. And like I told you, they came in for, for provisions and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, uh, they, they tank up naturally. I, I, I read this about the 180,000 gallons that they hold. I couldn't believe it. I said, Jesus. So they had an awful big, what's it, all one bottom uh, where, where they, the, the fuel is kept? The fuel can be distributed through the voids. Um, that's one way. Then there is some holding tanks. Yeah. But the actual total is 2.5 million gallons. Is that what it was? That's what it but they is. Didn't, they didn't put that. They didn't, they didn't put that in it right in. There. <laughs> no, no, it's 2.5 million gallons. Imagine that. That's what this holds. Would you believe it? You, when you stop to think of it, you say, well, I had guys who are crazy. Say, they don't put it in the paper for nothing. I said. It's actually recorded, you know, it was a series, World War II and everything. You know, it's, it's no phony, it's no baloney. And that was good because I, in my profession, I had it beautiful. I didn't have to have, I didn't have to stand no duties. That's when the guys used to go like that. They come up with this car. Come on, Muzz, we got to get going. I'm all dressed in my whites. And we, we go down to the, the, the big captain of the Marianas there with the hell of a Ganner, or is that what they call it, a Ganner? And we used to play for them every Saturday night, 10 of us. And the best part of that was we got 10 bucks a piece for playing that night, plus my regular uh, monthly payment I used to get, you know, my, my, my Navy pay. And Jesus, I did good. I say, boy, it's just all right. I was going to myself. I say, I, I don't mind doing this. And oh, another thing, we got, uh, we went ahead of anybody else, like to chow, and, and, and uh, you know, and and uh, noon noon dinner there and supper. We went to early chow, and that's another thing they used to be mad at me. They wanted, hey, you can't you come you come to chow? I said, nah, I should go like that. Say you stupid chunks, or don't you realize for Christ's sake, how you got early chow? I didn't I didn't put it the way, but I'd say it to myself. <laughs> And he's wondering why the hell he didn't see me there, you know, at, at the same time he was. I said, well, I got early chow, but I had to do duty. I had to go up to Tank's Nest, way up where the captain is there, and I had to shine uh, knobs on the doors, all these things, and a policing, in other words, policing. But it was nice. I was in with him, we sat down, I talked just like I could talk to him. You know, he wasn't a big wheel. Or, uh, and uh, we could talk about it. And, and then again, where I played the cordine, he heard me down in the deck when I was playing the cordine on the deck, you know, and uh, all those uh, southerners were there, the guitar slingers, and I'm playing the guitar for these guys, and there's some of them in there writing home to their girlfriend, all oh, nice letters and this and that, uh, well, how much they miss them. I, I, one time I took one just for the hell of it. Just to read it. Oh, Jesus. He was bombarded. He was, oh, boy. He really, she's going to leave him when he gets out of the seal. I mean, she's going to hook on him right away. <laughs> so I had, I had little things like that. You have your ups and downs, you know what I mean? But that, that's why I feel, geez, I did well. I played in a band. I had a good rating area. I, I, I didn't run and dress in dungaree plants all the time. I said, the only time I did that's when I got the Frisco. So I had 13 day leave before we got processed and get discharged. And I had about 1300 uh, not $1,300, $1,300, uh, yeah, $1,300 on me in my, my belt. Boy, I couldn't wait to go get a nice spaghetti feed or milk, glass of milk. And we had powdered milk. That, that's all we had in a ship was powdered milk. So we got off the transit that took it to Oakland. And that big dance hall there called Swedes Dance Hall. Oh, Jesus, you'd think every sail in the world was there. Dancing and this and that and this and that. Oh, my God, we're drinking and we used to put, tie a load on, you know, and we'd be singing away like crazy nuts. And you see that SP there, 
They're on the sidewalks watching everywhere. They just shove you in a thing and send you right back to, uh, well, I call it Yerner, but Yerner Island. Treasure Island is right near where the big jail is. And I and that's that's we go there and I said, oh, I'll be a son of a gun. So that's okay. I went and I bought some sport clothes, nice flower shirt and pair of pants and I had them in my my locker. And I said, I'm gonna go out out. I don't give a damn about the navy uniform. I'm not going out there anymore. I get I pulled in about three or four times they bagged me. They grab you by the arm and shove you in the thing and back we go to Yerner by Yerner Island, Treasure Island, you know, it's right there. And I, I said, the hell with that, from now on, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna know I'm a civilian. I mean, they ain't gonna know I'm in the Navy. I, held, I rented a locker down in, uh, in uh, Frisco. That's where I put my clothes that I shouldn't be having, you know, in the barracks where I am. I thought, when I got leave, 13 day leave, I went, opened it up, got my things dressed up in the men's room, and I went dancing and had a good time with a few highballs and everything, and made sure I got back in time, everything. And then we get ready to get discharged. Big line, you know. Wait for them. one line here, one here. And those days, you get there, they didn't go like this. They go, Psst, Jesus Christ. You know, one gets you from one side and one from the other side to give you that. You have to have that needle to, uh, when you go into service. I said, Holy Christ. And the funniest part is see these guys, these guys are bigger than me. They were like little kids. <laughs> I could see the expression in their face like they figured it were, the guy's going to hurt them or something. <laughs> I, I had a laugh to myself. <laughs> it wasn't was the funniest. Was every time it came around, we had to get our needles. Oh, Jesus. got got to get them again. You have to have them. They make you take them every so often. So primary, it's all I did with my time. It was Navy, you know, till I get out and stuff and I figured I got to do something. So I joined some of the veterans things, you know, one in Cohasset because I knew a lot of boys, the ones that came back from the war, and, they, and there was about 10 or 12 guys. And, and then when I joined it, we had up to about 80 some odd, odd guys that joined it. And then I had buddies in Hingham and Cohasset, and so it wasn't fair just to have, you know, to belong to one place. I thought that way. So what I did, I joined the Hingham, uh, uh, not not the, uh, the Hingham, um, what you call it there, the, the, the Army one, the other one in Hingham, and and, uh, and I, jo I joined that one. Too. So I so I went to both of them, and I had friends that way. I thought it was only fair, you know. Yeah. Do you have any other stories that you want to share? Oh, I could think a lot of them if this thing would work, but uh, you know, right now, like I'm thinking of what you asked me and, and trying to go back, uh, uh, I'll probably talk about things when we get in the cab. Say, Bill, why the hell didn't I say this? <laughs> and they'll give me, what the hell are you asking me for? I can see them now. <laughs> How'd they do so far? Pretty good. I gave you practically the, the, the whole setup of the West Coast there, and, you know. There was a, there was a hot, uh, the Japanese had a two-man submarine, you know, they could go anywhere with that thing. They used to bring them over as far as wherever they wanted to, unload them, then they unload them. And that's, that's where they could sneak in. That's what Ray's telling Pearl Harbor, the start of it. And sunk the Arizona, boom. And of course that was, uh, uh, you know, nobody knew they were going to be doing this. So it was like they really, they almost killed, they almost killed Hawaii over there with the damage they did. They had it all to themselves. The guys were sleeping, some of them, from the night before. And, 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 and they bombed all the garages, the eating places. It was terrible. Uh, Hawaii took an awful whack, but thank God that we pulled it off. We pulled it off good and it became ours again. Do you remember Pearl Harbor? The day of Pearl Harbor. Do I remember Pearl Harbor? Yeah. Sure. How you felt. Like, can you tell us how you felt that sure, day? Sure, I remember Pearl Harbor. Yeah. That's where we went. They called it broad, broad, they used to call it uh, Battleship Cove. That's from what I knew. There was about seven or eight battleships anchored in there. And that's what I was telling you about. That two-man submarine used, used to get in there. And believe it or not, it sunk that Arizona. It rolled over on its side. They didn't want to bring any more up because crisis cut a challenge, you know, and the thing to do that. So they were in deep water there. They were in deep water. Um, what impact did the Navy have on your life? 
What impact did the Navy have on your life? Which one? What impact did the Navy have on your life? Oh, I think it's a wonderful organization. I really do. It's a neat, it's not like the army you lead outside and they undig tents. That's not for me. I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I thought things over, boy, when it came to that. I said, I'm going to make sure I get chow. The hell with that, saving out and all that. So that's what it, I thought. I thought it was wonderful. I almost joined the CBs, to tell you the truth, because when I got over Guam, they were working on Guam. They were blessing and, 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 and making an Apra Habra. They were just about finishing when, when we went there so that the ships came in and, and fueled and all that stuff. How does it feel to be back? How does it feel? How does it feel to be back on the battleship? Oh, when I went back to you? Yeah, when I went back with uh, my former wife, which you know I don't have now, we went, went out there and I, I did go to uh, the veteran the, the veteran cemetery, some of those things like that, and a few of those stuff. I know, and I, I, I could see it as I could see it. This, this is what they blew apart, they did this apart, this is the part they, 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 they raided it. They, see what they did, uh, they came in at a low range around, uh, I used to know the name of that, uh, I used to know the name of that, about, about 10 feet off the water and then through, through right, right through uh, Hawaii. They came in at low range and they raised hell, like they got everybody was asleep, uh, planes were laying there and they really ruined their place. They, they really did. They really ruined that place. What the hell have we got here? How does it feel to be back today? Oh, geez, it feels good. If you just say it, it hurts me every time I, 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 I see some of these guys. Now, I used to play for them a lot of times, but, you know, I have feelings, too, especially with the veterans. And I used to play with my band, like, for Christmas parties or for things like that. And, geez, it just see some of those poor buggers there that, a shell shock, uh, and, uh, and to see the way that this, this country used to take care of us, I, I didn't care for it. And some of them, they used to take them and put them in a wheelchair and shove them out in the hall and leave them out in the hallway there. You don't do that to them. And I felt bad when you see them. For Christ's sake, they probably shot up and every other thing, shell shock and everything, who knows what the hell. I feel bad for them. I, I don't care what they did. Whatever they gave them, they deserved more. That, that's the way I look at it, exactly. Even myself, I, I help people any day. I don't have to be in the service to help anybody. Just just put yourself up and help a little bit. It don't cost nothing, you know what I'm saying? Memorial Day was to march a lot, uh, which when I was young, I could hoof it. Now, Christ, to go from Quincy down to you know, AM, <laughs> Jesus, I'm lucky if I go half a mile. This leg is just not acting up. It tells me, okay, it's time to rest. <laughs> Before we're finished, do you have anything else you'd like to say? No, but I, I, I think the world of this ship. I really do. It's got, it's got, I can't say nothing bad about it. It's did its share, and, and it looks like it's still in nice shape, except for the, the decking. It can make a, a thing if they start taking collections or something for them to put new decking on. So I wonder if somebody don't fall on it. There's things missing when you hit your feet when you walk and everything. And see, that's why aircraft carriers burned up because they had wooden decks, metal, but wooden on, on metal. And when, it, they, when they, they strike it and everything else, it, they caught fire, they'd burn the hell, all burn right up, right up like nothing. Yeah. It was good. You could talk. Uh, you could talk uh, all week on different things. Things will come up that I didn't say. Uh, you know, and other times we used to get together for four or five years. Know we were each other was a right to each other once in a while. Let's talk to each other. You know, after we left boot camp. You know, well, we didn't know where the hell we were gonna go. Not all of them went on the same ship. Some went here. Some went there. It depends on where they put you. You know, when I first got on, I, I had a laugh. They put me on a freighter. It was about fifty of us. And I said to myself, what the hell is this? They put, put us on a freighter, on a fl freighter. That's not a troop ship or anything like that. And another question, maybe he can answer it. I don't know, I haven't got anything that gave me an answer. Why did we have to wait before they tell us where they're going until we get out 20 miles? 20 miles 
before they tell us where we're going to go, where's our destination. On my ship, half of us ended on Guam at first, and the other half went to the Philippines out of that, that, uh, that ship that took us over there. So I can never figure that out. Mostly the huh? Mostly to uh, not have any messages intercepted. I mean, by the I enemy. mean, why the hell would why would we, why would we have to wait? You know, twenty miles where they're going to say hey, we're going over to Guam or we're going to here. I don't. Know. I, I could never. I was looking for a reason. Mm -hmm. I could see within a reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else I could tell you. <laughs> Thank you for your service and taking your time. Oh, to I'm telling you, you know how nice it was when I my son-in-law told me that they, we they got the ship out here. I said, oh, beautiful, <laughs> Jesus, beautiful. I had my eye. Maybe I would have probably got to Massachusetts. I would have put in for that, but I'm glad I did what I did. But boy, when I look at it now, it's it's, it's the same ship, beautiful, and the firepower this thing's got. When you say a shell that can go 20 miles, <laughs> that's pretty potent. Pretty potent, I'm telling you. They get scratch here and there now and then, you know, Japanese zeros or something like that, but nothing, nothing to, to really hurt the ship and running and stuff like that, you know. But then again, we had. You believe they really had 2,000 sailors on on this ship? 2,000. Mm -hmm. Me, I would have said, Christ, it looks like they need five. <laughs> they're walking here through these doors, and they, geez, they look like they walk a mile. They probably only shot in the days I was there. <laughs> and and they modified, made it look even nicer in places, you know, compared to us. Those bunks that those officers have got, this, they, they look nice. I mean, the duty looked like it was good. The food was good. All that stuff was good. Really was. I mean, I can't complain. I had lousy days. I hated it out here. And, you couldn't hate anything. You had to watch your fanny. You don't want to get shot. In them days, so I went about three times on a bivouac, like I told you, at nighttime, scouting to, uh, to uh, pick up the Japanese that didn't know the war was over. The ones we used to get this to have hair like you down down to their rear end. And the funniest part, one more thing. Every time we were in the concert, waiting outside the concert to go in the chow hall, you know how they are, the lion, and the guys that had to put it on your plate. I see this guy with the dungaree fans, things like this. And how are you going to tell the Japanese from a Guam they like Chinese eyes, the same thing? <laughs> they are, they're the same thing. And I son of a bitch, I said, you know, he, he looks, he looks for me, he looks for me. I've seen him more places, I'm, it bothers me. So I, I, I got the guys that say, you know something? See that guy there? I, there's something about him. I said, why don't you investigate him? Oh, come on, Marshal, Christ's sake, you want to be headlines or something? No, I said, I, I, really, he's here He's here in the morning, and he's here in the afternoon, and he's, I, I don't know about night, I didn't see him at night. Those two times he was in, er, early chow, mixed in with our men, and our guys didn't even know. So that's one thing I said to myself, Jesus, uh, forget the slanted eyes, they're all the same there. So they come to find out that, that uh, true, he was, he was a Japanese. Wow. And how he survived? He used to rob the, 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 the Guamanians, whoever the ones that lived in their gardens, they used to go on their, their uh, uh, vegetables and they grow. That's how they, they, they lived to the area after the war was over like that when I saw them. That's how, that's how they got by, they lived, because they wanted to know how the hell did they live? Where'd they get their food? How'd they live on it? That's how they did it, by stealing all the natives' farms that they had grown. And maybe a few cows and things like that, who knows, but that's, that was it. Well, thank you again for taking your time. Well, I was time. only glad to do this. I was looking forward to it. I got to please my son-in-law here and my daughter, you know. <laughs> And, uh, for driving me down, cause I, I, I said, geez, I don't know, Bill, how's the weather out this morning? You ain't get your ass in gear, he goes, we're going down there. So well, I jumped in the shower, we took off, and here we are, we made it. <laughs> I said, there you go, it, looked, it looks the same to me. <laughs> and I kept getting closer, and it kept getting bigger, I said, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, so 
So I mean, basically, I I I, I can't complain about my my stitch that I had in the service, mm -hmm. because you know I got help from playing, and, and things like that, and 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 it made me it made my thing. But I played for the guys, and on Sundays out on the deck, and then you go and you see them right into the girls' home. I said, Jesus Christ, you're pretty service. Are you going to marry her? I used to peek over his shoulder sometimes. <laughs> Get the hell out of here, they used to go. But that monkey, so I'm a bitch, if I had a knife, I, I'd, I'd cut him in half. Oh, cigarettes, everything, all over the place. We had to put things on the table to find out who the hell was what. And, and you know something? We weren't supposed to have that on the island because they're an animal that carries disease, a lot of diseases. A monkey does. Then, I can't tell you about that. Then he was up there on the top of the roof. Where, <laughs> Jesus Christ, he climbed way up where the water tower was. Imagine that. Oh, Jesus, if he destroys that now, what the hell are we going to do? And, and and I told I said, Jay, you guys, this is a serious thing. What, what if he gets serious, that goddamn monkey? Uh, what if we were sleeping or something, you know? <laughs> I had a lot of things in my mind. I, I was I wanted to kill him, honest to God. So what happened? I said, ah, Jesus. Where'd he go? He, I said, I said, I, I, I wait. If if I see him with a collar on, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna get the hell out of the service and find another job. <laughs> well, that's the way it is. Funny or no funny, <laughs> I can remember more. But Jesus, my memory's not like it used to be. I'll think of a lot of stuff later. I thought, oh, Jesus, I could have told it is, but what can I tell you? So this concludes our interview. Yeah. Um, thank you. Well, so I much. got an intruder. Who was it? The admiral? Who was that out there? The admiral or uh, uh, Captain uh, Urban? Oh, Captain. How many? I, I didn't. Walter I didn't see him many things he had. That's why I wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, he just come captain. over, and and he was nice. He says, you know, some. Would you mind throwing the reef? I'd be glad to. Jesus, we, 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 we made out right off the bed. I said, Christ, you picked me up all these people? I said, what the hell do you know about me? <laughs> so that was, I'm glad to do that, yeah. What did he say to you? He came over to you guys, Bill. Did he say something to you? Yeah, um, they don't want to speak because uh, you know, oh, they okay. would have to sign waivers. Okay, all right, we can do that. We can ask but after. I hope interview. it was interesting <laughs> what I told you, you know, a little bit. Maybe you... Nice. Put it in black and white. You might put it in a book somewhere or something. <laughs> but thank you, you too. Thank you for you know. You're welcome. Being being helpful. My honor and pleasure. This probably never happened again. I'm 90 now. How the hell? How you know how? Uh, I I live. I try to live nice and do things and help people. I still play the coding, but not like the used to. I play it for my enjoyment now. I used to play weddings, governors. The state police, mass state police. I had all those nice jobs, Christmas parties, but I was younger then. I, I could hoof it. I used to tell people, come on, get your ration gear, let's go. I do things. Excuse me for swearing, but I tell it the way it was. <laughs> That's why the guys probably like me a lot of, you know. Oh, and another thing, my poor mother, he says, I'm Italian. And Jesus, when I was older, she used to send me a box of capicolo, salami, all Italian stuff. But Christ, the box was like this. You know what I got out of that? Maybe I could have made two sandwiches. <laughs> Christ, they jumped on that like it was a ring of gold. And when it came in, the postman bought it to me. I says, holy Christ. And I, I, I said, I can't tell my mother that. She said, sure, my mother's sincere. She said, why'd you let them have it? I, that's what she would say to me. <laughs> I said to you, who the hell, why, why'd you give it to me? That's what you told me. She would give me hell. I'm telling you, the box must have weighed about 50 pounds for Christmas. All I had to share it with the guys then, what the hell am I going to do? <laughs> I, no, no Christmas tree to get to have, and then you want one of those palm things that hang up, but you don't see no Christmas trees, you know? But that was it, and I played a little bit, like I told you. And, when you can't stay out on on a beach, when you when you first went there, the first thing they said to us, "Now hear this." That's guy you hear that a lot. Now hear this. T-shirts off, 15 minutes only, the first 30 days. That's what they meant. Because one guy when we were on the Telefuco beach there, 
he decided to a drink. You know, we, we bought four or five cases of beer, and we took them out of the cases, and we made a circle. And then we kept building it up like this, and then we took every goddamn fire signature you see in a place where we were freezing the beers, you know, to cool them off so we can drink them. And this jerky, is, he's laying there, he, I don't know how long he was there, but they had to take him on a stretcher and put jelly all over him in the cigar. <laughs> From, oh, he was here maybe three hours in that sun like that. You know how hot it gets out there at noontime? Yeah. Holy Christ. So those are my experiences, good and bad. <laughs> I hope somebody don't write a better one. <laughs> um, this is Gabriella Minetta, intern from the College of New Jersey, working with the Oral History Program on board the Battleship New Jersey in Camden, New Jersey. Um, assisted by Mr. Angelo Pizzullo. Um, today is November 11, 2018. Our interview guest is Anthony Muzzy from um, Hingham, Massachusetts. This recording and any transcripts, abstracts, or indexes made from the recordings will be stored in the Oral History Department of the Battleship New Jersey, the Library of Congress Veterans History Project, and the New Jersey State Library System. All recordings will be made available to writers, researchers, teachers, and historians. Gabriella Minetta signing off. Very nice, very nice. Now you got a general briefing of what goes on. Thank Probably you. could tell you I'll have a lot more, but. <laughs> Thank you.